Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, June 8th, 2020. COVID update, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Optimal Health Associates. So, hey, good evening, everyone. A nice day in Oklahoma City, hot, um, getting into the midst of our summer. Hope people throughout the country and wherever else you may be listening to this are doing well. Um, so COVID numbers, uh, about 18,000 more today or over the last 24 hours. We had a spike to 35, but that back down to 22 and then back down to 18. So hopefully we'll keep on that trend and the people getting together from Memorial Day and the protests won't cause an increase in, in cases. Again, not criticizing, uh, just observing. The kind of timeline, um, which I've reviewed again, is some of the recent data makes the timeline from in exposure to infection on average about seven days. Earlier data was five. Um, it can go as far as 20, but I think we'd probably end up saying the average is between five and seven, um, but going extending out for 20 days. But again, that kind of tapers down after day 14. So we really need to see about another week and a half before we'll know for sure. Um, and that will cover most of the exposed people from that time frame of the last week and a half or two weeks. Um, deaths about 500 in the United States, um, well over 2 million cases, about 113,000 total deaths. Uh, world, too many to keep track of other than it's a, over 400,000 deaths and more than 7 million cases. I think we do want to emphasize some stuff about the world though because the world data is really important. They do things sometimes before we do or after we do. And the before we do is France and South Korea. Both those places opened their schools back up to an extent pretty significantly um, in early May and by mid-May. Um, so what's happened there? Well, there hasn't been a spike of cases in children or teachers at all. There were some initial cases in France the first week, but they were doing a lot of testing and those were pre precedent to school opening. Subsequently, uh, France is starting to relax more restrictions right now. There's been absolutely no uptick in cases in France from opening schools, which is wonderfully reassuring. In Korea, um, same exact data. There's been a slight increase up to about 50 cases a day the last few days. Those are all been contact traced and it's predominantly nightclubs, which I talked about many posts ago for people in their 20s and 30s. Um, as the source and then food sellers and things like that in Seoul, no kids associated cases whatsoever from schools, no teacher associated cases either. So that's the key concept. School children, younger children are not the source of the infection. The World Health Organization had a report out today saying asymptomatic carriers for the most part are not spreaders. We were very concerned about that if you remember in March because we didn't know and in April, it's turning out that asymptomatic carriers or people who get the infection without symptoms, for the most part, are not going to be giving the infection to anyone else because the infection looks like it's so mild in them, so they're not big viral secretors. So again, very reassuring news on school openings and on younger people. A little cluster of cases um, in Oklahoma City. I can't remember the name of the bar, which I- Cat's Tavern. Cat's Tavern from two weekends ago uh, is the report I've heard from the state health department, um, both people Friday and Saturday, the weekend before last, um, seems to have been a hot spot. And there's been several cases and really one of the first clusters in Oklahoma City of uh, more than four to six or seven people from one location getting um, COVID. And no one's gotten really sick, but there are definitely symptomatic people in the late or mid tw uh, late 20s and early 30s uh, from there. Um, but again, no one is sick, just uh, a little bit of symptomatic cough, cold, congestion, flu type things. No one has escalated at all. Uh, so again, it takes one person in the wrong spot. These nightclubs seem to be a problem, uh, both in South Korea and lo and behold, even in Oklahoma City, you put a bunch of peop young people together and you know, one thing leads to another and all of a sudden they may play kissy face or something and voila, there's COVID going around. But the thing to keep in mind is they're not getting that sick. Uh, so moving forward, what do we need to do? Well, A, COVID's gonna be in our environment. 
take your vitamins. If you've been on zinc for a while now, several months, um, you can probably skip Saturday and Sunday. Your immune system's ratcheted up. You want to be on your vitamin D. You want to be on your uh, multivitamin, and you want to be on melatonin, especially if you're a little bit older, to help abbreviate any inflammatory pathways. So, summary. Preliminary data, looking at it sociologically in a, a large community setting in both France and South Korea, opening up schools face-to-face -face had no impact on coronavirus, uh, period, in terms of incidence or severity. Both countries are doing very well overall. Uh, when we look at the WHO data that's preliminary but really starting to mature a little bit, uh, asymptomatic carriers are not the ones who are getting people infected. It's symptomatic infected people and it's going to be symptomatically infected adults that we have to think about um, could infect people. So all good news as we get into the summer. Remember heat kills uh, COVID-19. 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes on a surface is going to kill the virus. It's not going to prosper well in salt water. It is not going to do well except in a more lukewarm to cool surface, higher humidity. Um, it's going to do better and more in an inside environment. Outside is very limited. And the thing you got to keep in mind too is um, a lot of people are doing crazy stuff. Um, you look at uh, the Philippines, uh, the President Duarte said there's no schools are going to be open until there's a vaccine. You look at Crested Butte, Colorado, who I think today they mandate masks everywhere inside and outside. Again, the abandonment of science over any for fear. And um, we're not going to ask anyone with expertise. Um, we're just going to make whimsical and arbitrary decisions because we're fearful. I love that. No, I don't. I can't stand people who operate out of a fear mode. And to have decision makers consistently doing that in these communities on throughout Colorado, which have been pretty restrictive and are they're destroying their economies um, and the livelihoods of the people who live there um, is not good for them. And it doesn't avoid disease events. So kind of silly um, stopping all classroom education in the Philippines till there's a um, vaccine that is going to be uh, potentially available. There's one in September, but again, a very rapidly developed vaccine. I don't know if giving millions and millions and millions of doses of a brand new developed vaccine to people uh, is wise. I mean, there's a couple other questions to ask about vaccines. First, if you get a vaccine for COVID, one of the things you would like to know is, besides let's assume, which is a huge assumption it's safe, how long does that immunity last? Is it like tetanus? You get a tetanus shot. It's really good for five years and really begins to wane and you have to get it every 10 years. Um, is it only good for three years? And that's what some of the preliminary information could be. I mean, how long does it last for? What's the risk of repetitive dosing? I mean, there's lots of issues with this vaccine stuff. And I'm, a pro, I'm for vaccines, for appropriate vaccines. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. But, but I am, if anything, I would be considered a very adamant pro-vaxxer since I think hepatitis vaccines are important, HPV, tetanus, polio. I mean, a whole laundry list of them we strongly recommend in my practice in my life. But the thing is, it's based on science and safety. And so rushing a vaccine out and giving it to a whole bunch of people without knowing what it actually does um, always is concerning. We wouldn't do that with a medicine um, for the FDA, um, excluding remdesivir, which again, the FDA did without any, one double-blinded control trial showing that it has saved lives. So just remember with vaccines, um, we need to be very careful. I don't think there should be mandating of a COVID vaccine. Um, that seems incredibly strange to me on a viral uh, infection that doesn't harm children, which is what the data shows. So you wouldn't want to mandate a vaccine to children in particular, since the vaccine would have a greater risk of harming them than the virus does, which is what the data shows. So we're going to be in an interesting times over the next several months when it comes to this. Um, so again, the problem with anything is believing there's one way of looking at it. So it's not about being an anti-vaxxer or pro-vaxxer or pro-medicine or against medicine. It, it's about what does this particular situation warrant. 
Um, so that's what we have to start thinking about with a vaccine for COVID. Is it really warranted for each group? Um, and should you ever mandate a vaccine to a group for a virus that's just a community acquired thing? So interesting stuff. Um, we'll talk more about it. Have a wonderful week and good night.